I was honoured yesterday to spend the morning at Buckingham Palace. I was at Canada Gate broadcasting and then stood on the railings and watched that incredible procession. As the old James Bond song used to go, nobody does it better. And I really do believe that the pageantry, the pomp, the military precision, the planning, the organisation, the policing, everything about it was just magnificent. And I have to say, when the Queen's Coffin came into view with the royal family behind marching once again along the streets, and what an arduous few days King Charles and the rest of the family had been through. But there was silence as the coffin went past. And then, as the cars started to come with the Queen Consort and other members of the royal family, the crowd spontaneously burst into applause. It was like an emotional relief, and it's been, I don't know about you, I felt a very emotional few days. Later on, I was watching what was the, the, the incredible scenes at Windsor on a big TV outside a pub in central London, and the street was full of people watching the service at Windsor in complete an utter silence. It was quite extraordinary. You literally could hear a pin drop. And then, after the very moving committal, and I mean, who can forget the removal of the crown, the orb, the scepter, the symbolism of it all, as the coffin disappeared from public view for the last time, the national anthem struck up, people in the street spontaneously singing, God save the king. There was barely a dry eye in the place. Quite extraordinary, quite remarkable, very moving but I was lucky and privileged to be here in London and to be able to play in some way a part in it. I've also been broadcasting on it night after night as well. What do we learn from all of this? We learn, actually, that we're a constitutional monarchy. We've had a system since 1688 that has served us arguably better than other country, any other country in the world. It's a system that protects us against fascism, against communism, against extremism, and it's a system overwhelmingly we love, and the rest of the world looks on in awe, and I think a little bit of jealousy too. Can you believe four billion people watched that service yesterday? 60% of the world's population honouring the world's most famous person, and I think the world's most loved person too. I think those that wish to divide us, those that wish to have their Marxist dream of bringing everything down and installing a new communist-style centralist government. They've had their worst 10 days, I think, ever. Not only is the monarchy here to stay and very, very strong, and I just hope King Charles keeps his promise not to be political, and I believe that he will, but the values that the Queen represented, that we are fundamentally a Christian-based country but tolerant to everybody, that things like duty and service are respected. I think some of those values are gonna come back into fashion. Doesn't mean politically we haven't got great problems. Of course we have. Do you know what we always have had? But I think the Queen's death, which I was very sad about, albeit she was 96, I think the Queen's death actually has united the country in an incredible way. And it's shown me that actually, I hate having, talking to people in that queue who were going in to you know, the hall to pay their respects to the Queen's coffin. It's shown me we're still not, not just a great country in the world, but still a country predominantly made up of very nice people. It's the day after, normal life is resuming, but I feel the net effect of the last few days is really good for the UK.